The Wolf Conservation Center in South Salem, New York, is home to 25 wolves. Yes, we're talking wolves today, <laughs> we and we're going to learn all about them. We are. Joining us now from the Wolf Conservation Center is Maggie Howell, the Managing Director, Rebecca Bose, the Curator, and yes, welcome Atka, an Ambassador Arctic Gray Wolf. It's great to have all of you. Now, when we look at Atka, I mean, you think about, when you think about wolves, you think about that big, bad wolf, but he certainly is not. No, yeah, wolves have a terrible reputation from fairy tales, movies, uh, fables, but wolves are actually uh, very shy and elusive creatures, not really interested in people, but Atka, as an ambassador, uh, actually is pretty interested in people and he travels all over the Northeast helping people learn more about his wild brothers and sisters. He's been walking around the whole studio, sniffing around. Oh, he's been having a blast. He has. <laughs> does Adka make school visits or does he go to museums? Does. What does he do? He goes, he visits uh, schools, museums, libraries all over the Northeast. Actually here in this neck of the woods he goes um, usually about once a year to the, the Yale Peabody Museum. Sure. Um, so, yeah, he, he, he takes us all sorts of places. All right, what are some of the characteristics of wolves that we may not know? Um, well, wolves, as I mentioned, they're, they're misunderstood. Um, you know, fables like Little Red Riding Hood, yes. the Three Little Pigs, um, they really uh, make, paint the wolf out to be a, a, a bad guy. Uh, where real wolves really are shy and elusive creatures, uh, they're frightened of people. And uh, they tend to stay very far away from people in the wild. And, um, and Atka really is wonderful because he gives so many people oh, opportunity. He's getting comfortable here. <laughs> of course. <Okay. laughs> oh, I'm glad uh, to see that. To kind of see an animal they'd probably never be able to see in the wild. So, um, you know, wolves are a, a keystone predator. They have a very important role in nature, keeping everything in balance. And, uh, and they're also kind of the symbol of our nation's wildlife. So it's, it's really neat to give people an opportunity to really embrace the wild mm -hmm. uh, right in their own community. Let's talk a little bit about the, the conservation center. Where did these wolves come from? Ah, well, we have three uh, teacher wolves or ambassador wolves like Atka. We have Atka and actually two uh, nine-month-old wolves, uh, Aleoa and Zephyr. I call them wolflets because they're not quite <laughs> full-grown yet. And uh, these are the wolves that really uh, people get to see when they come and visit us and help people learn more about the importance of wolves. Uh, we also are home to critical endangered red wolves and Mexican gray wolves and most of these guys stay off exhibit because many of them are candidates for release uh, we've actually had two of our wolves release our Mexican gray wolves into the southwest uh, the first one 2006 the second one 2008 and so we don't allow our visitors to see most of those uh, because if they will be released it's not really good that they're used to seeing people uh, and those guys are actually owned by the federal government so uh, lots of different facilities participate in this uh, federal program and so we do a lot of swapping of the Mexican wolves and red wolves among the, the network of facilities. What about the wolf population overall? Uh, well, you know, wolves are really adaptable creatures, and they really thrived here in the lower 48 states for thousands of years. Uh, but then hundreds of years ago, when Europeans, you know, sailed across the Atlantic to sell the New World, we brought a lot of fear of wolves with us, and uh, stories like Little Red Riding Hood. And uh, when people started keeping animals like cows and sheep, um, we started killing wolves. And we basically wiped out the wolf population here in the lower 48. Uh, the 1970s were down to 500 to 1,000, and all of those wolves lived in Minnesota. Uh, but since then, in the passage of the Endangered Species Act, uh, we've had a lot of programs to restore wolves to the Good. wild. Yeah, today we have wolf populations in um, the northern Rocky Mountains, over 1,600. Uh, the western Great Lakes states, we've got uh, uh, close to 5,000 or 4,000. Uh, now in the southwest, we have Mexican gray wolves. And right in North Carolina, a place people don't really think of being wolf country, uh, we've had 150 red wolves. So uh, we're making a comeback here in the lower 48. And what does Atka eat on a daily basis? Um, well, as an ambassador, he's a pretty flexible menu <laughs> uh, because he's never going to be a wild wolf. Sure. Uh, but in general, our staple diet at the Wolf Center is roadkill deer. So our neighbors love it because who Cleans wants roadkill right? deer around, <laughs> right? So we just pick it up and it's a great free resource of food. Not the most glamorous part of our job. But, um, but also he gets, he'll get just about any sort of meat possible. Uh, we don't feed any live prey um, just because it wouldn't be fair to be a canned hunt even though they have large uh, enclosures. Um, but there is the occasional critter that makes a very poor career move <laughs> and oh. goes in to visit the wolves. So Atka himself has caught uh, wild turkey, uh, black vulture, um, he ate a skunk last summer. Is he fast? Like, is he still he is pretty fast? Mild? Yeah. Um, wolves, they're not, they're not known for their top speed, like a cheetah. Uh -huh. uh, actually, their top speed is close to 35 miles per hour. 
Uh, a healthy deer, they can run about 45 miles per hour. Okay. So to put that in perspective. Now, how long have Rebecca and Aka been together? Uh, Rebecca's our curator, and she was lucky enough to be part of the crew to help raise Atka from eight days old. He looked like a little meatloaf. <laughs> and uh, his eyes were still closed, his ears down. And uh, when he finally opened his eyes at around 10 days old, he was surrounded by a really dedicated group of volunteers to help raise him, and also a very special German shepherd who was his nanny. Oh, yeah. Now, Great Maggie, we, we know uh, the movie The Grey is coming out, mm -hmm. and it's kind of giving wolves a bad rap. Yeah, it's a movie. It's a it's a thriller action flick uh, with Liam Neeson and um, and a couple other movie stars, and basically it's about a, a bunch of oil rig guys and they're in a plane crash, mm -hmm. and then have to deal not only surviving in the Arctic or the Alaskan tundra, but also some man-eating wolves. And uh, so we're really just trying to get out there just to remind people that wolves are not man-eaters. He doesn't look like a man-eater right now. No, that's, for that's, sure. that's just a movie. <laughs> it's just a movie. And unfortunately, you know, there's wolves. A lot of people people have really deep fear mm -hmm. for wolves. Wolves evoke emotion from people. And uh, we really just want to remind people that that's not the case. And, um, and also because wolves are always a hot topic, a political hot potato, basically, uh, we want to remember that when it comes to politics and wolf management of wild wolves, we hope this movie doesn't put a kind of a black mark on that as well. You just want to cuddle him. I know, I want to pet him, <laughs> but I don't want to make him mad either. <laughs> he's yeah, a wild funny. animal, right? They don't, yeah, even though Atka was raised by people, mm -hmm. he doesn't really, I mean, he's used to our touch. We can touch him if we want. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't ask for it. And, uh, and it's much different than a dog, you know, because uh, people will compare wolves and dogs often, but they're very closely related. But, um, but there's definitely a difference when it comes to the relationship with people. Interesting. So uh, we understand you're going to be up in the West Hartford area? Yeah, this weekend. We're going to be at the Children's Museum on Saturday. That's the one with the big giant whale. Yep. So it's easy to get to. Atka's been there since... I don't, since he was like one. He goes there all the time and uh, it's great. We actually do the presentation in the planetarium so he's always looking up. He's a regular uh, there. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Very good. So what, what, are the, what are the kids going to be able to do with, the, with Atka? Um, well, we're going to do a presentation, basically Wolf 101, uh, diffuse any fears and myths that surround wolves, talk about what wolves really are, where they're living, how they behave, how they communicate, and then that's when Atka comes in and steals the show. Oh, and he'll yes. just walk around and give <laughs> everyone a really excellent encounter with this beautiful, beautiful beast. And if you want, today too. absolutely, <laughs> everyone's around here looking at him. All right, for more information on the Wolf Conservation Center, all you have to do is go to nywolf.org. Yep. Very good. It's just great to have you guys oh, here with us. So yeah, it's every day you have a wolf here. Exactly. So we've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Well, thanks so much. Up next, Mentoring Matters will tell you how you can step up and volunteer when Connecticut Style returns.